Yep. Do you guys believe in other dimensions? I do because I I believe that I crossed over into one once before a long time ago without realizing it. Now that I look back on it, that's what I think happened. Cuz there was no reason I should have gotten lost like I did. Hello everybody and welcome to Jeans Reviews. Reviews from a regular day where I do trailer reactions, I react to YouTube videos, I review YouTube channels, occasionally I review a movie, but really, I just do whatever the hell I want. Hello everybody and welcome to Gene's Reviews. Reviews from a regular dude. Okay, we're doing one again from the channel Missing Persons Mysteries or Missing People's Mysteries, something like that. I'll let you know once we get started. This is a hiker found alive after missing nine days in the wilderness. Sounds pretty cool. I like good endings. I'm a sucker for them. So let's check this out. This morning we're learning more about the remarkable story of a rescued hiker who survived more than a week in the rugged Washington wilderness by eating berries and drinking river water. It's very surreal. For Andrew Devers. It still feels like I'm not like fully awake. This moment doesn't seem real. Yeah, I don't believe myself. Like, and even now, like, I, it, this, there's a person with a camera and you. Like, this doesn't, like, a, five days ago, like, I'm accepting that I'm dead. Flashback, he was here, lost in the Cascades. Like, I stopped thinking about, like, weeks and months and years, and it just, it only came down to, like, hours. What started as a three mile hike for inspiration. Could you imagine? Thinking that there's no way you're going to survive this. You're a dead man. And then all of a sudden you are rescued. That would be the most emotional thing I think I could think of. One of the most emotional things I could think of. ...turned into a nine-day fight for survival. There was like so many moments where I was like, this is it, you're out, you know? And then it's like shattered, or hopes are shattered. This mm -hmm. is everything he had in his possession, surviving off of berries and river water, literally screaming for help as search crews closed down trails and flew overhead. Yeah, I feel like a ghost. I could hear everything, but no one was hearing me. And there was choppers, but they can't see me. Battered. And some stuff was pussing. Bruised. I was legitimately like understanding that like I'm probably dying. And giving up hope. It was really weird to get to those that level of acceptance. He made a last ditch effort to survive. I ended up randomly just like crawling over a tree and finding like an acorn path and that somehow ended up being the same trail I got lost on. That's where two men found him and where Andrew found his saving grace. Like I didn't believe that anybody was actually there until the rescue workers were like calling my name and then I was like is that is that my name? I was like that's my name. It's like, that's me. It's Andrew. He may be dehydrated and his muscles may have atrophied but he's alive. What would you say to those guys? I, I, I don't have words. I, I don't, I, I, I just genuinely like human to human, like, thank you. That's why you should carry a compass with you, some, something like that. Or know a little bit like the sun rises in the east and sets in the west and find your directions that way know what direction you came from that type of thing hello friends welcome to the latest installment of our true tales of survival series in this episode we'll delve into the story of a hiker and some of the strange experiences he encountered while spending an incredible nine days lost in the woods of the Cascades near North Bend Washington June 18th started out just as any other day for Andrew Devers. It was a beautiful day, and Andrew had woken up that morning with hiking on his mind. So, he hopped into his car and took off on what he believed would be a relaxing three-mile hike up the Pratt River Trail. Now, Andrew had solo hiked this short trail successfully more than a dozen times previously, so he thought nothing of taking off on a whim. He simply left his apartment without a phone, thinking his hike would be free from distracting technology. Without telling anyone where he was going or when he planned to return, That's a mistake. he drove the short distance to North Bend's Middle Fork Trailhead. In retrospect, he now understands how foolhardy this folly was and how it almost cost him his very life. 
So he arrived and hit the trail with a water bottle, a thermos of coffee, two cans of Mountain Dew, and a couple of personal items. Andrew hadn't bothered to pack any food for the hike, instead looking forward to the can of SpaghettiOs that was waiting in his vehicle for after the hike was over. Speaking with a local news station, Andrew recalls, I had a notebook with me, and I was expecting to get to the top, read my book for a little bit, write a couple poems, and then come back, he said. So, Andrew hiked merrily along the trail, enjoying his time commuting with nature. But then, in what he says seemed like only a short time, Andrew was suddenly and inexplicably very lost. Yeah, he wasn't paying attention. Says, I was following what I thought was the trail, and then I just remember being off in my own head for about 40 minutes, and then I look back, and there's no trail. Andrew goes on to say that he believes he spent the first six hours or so alternating between trying to locate a familiar landmark and screaming for help, but to no avail. This could also be one of those crossing into another dimension things without realizing it. After those first few hours, still very lost and no closer to finding his way back onto the trail, it began to grow dark. Andrew picked out a comfortable looking spot beneath a tree so he could rest up and try to find his way out come daylight. However, the next day was just as disorienting. Andrew became very frustrated that he wasn't having any luck finding his way out of the woods. That day was essentially a repeat of the one before. By the time the third day rolled around, Andrew said his mind had begun to play tricks on him. By June 22nd, it had already been four days since Andrew began his three-mile hike and seemingly disappeared. The King County Sheriff's Office, or KCSO, had been made aware of Andrew's disappearance by this point, and along with trained search and rescue volunteers, they began searching the area. The Middle Fork Trailhead was closed to prevent any interference with the SAR efforts, and a tweet was released requesting any information from the public. As the days continued to pass, Andrew was still unable to find his way out or even find anything that looked halfway familiar. Andrew states at times he remembers hearing a person's voice calling out. Do you guys believe in other dimensions? I do because I, I believe that I crossed over into one once before a long time ago without realizing it. Now that I look back on it, that's what I think happened. To him from across the river. Because there was no reason I should have gotten lost like I did. To find the voice, he ended up falling in and was carried downstream. Eventually, he was able to grab hold of a low-hanging tree limb and pull himself out of the water. It was in this area, on the other side of the river, that he discovered the first food he had seen in days. Andrew says, I swear I heard my girlfriend's voice, and I looked to the right, and there's this, like, perfect red berry. And then I follow these berries, and it leads me to this personal oasis that I was able to recover in. Because at this point, my legs and everything were all messed up, but I didn't have food until then. Andrew continued explaining the miracle berries. He says, they tasted phenomenal. They tasted like life. Like, I could feel the life going back into my body, he said. Yeah. The berries helped settle the hunger gnawing at his belly, but after what seemed like days of prowling the woods for more berries and drinking water from the river to satisfy his thirst, Andrew could feel hope once again slipping away. I was like screaming, and no one was listening to me. No one was replying, he says. Several times, Andrew spotted helicopters flying just above the treetops, but was unable to catch their attention. I feel like a ghost. Like I can hear everything, but no one can hear me. And there's choppers, but they can't see me, Andrew wrote in his notebook. The days continued to pass, and he continued his written account of being lost in the woods. At the beginning of his ordeal, Andrew even wrote ideas for YouTube videos and other creative things that popped into his head. When he first spotted the helicopter, he even penned a poem for the pilot he could see inside, begging him for help. As the days of solitude wore on and hope seemed to fade even more, he even wrote out his wedding vows, so that if he didn't make it out, 
His girlfriend of seven years would hopefully find solace in knowing that he had, indeed, intended to marry her. Day seven and eight, I was like, okay, I'm actually dying. Be fair to the people you're leaving behind, Andrew said. I was accepting I was dying, he continues. I think the saddest part is no one was going to be there. Yeah. It was on the ninth day that Andrew made the last grasp of survival. He spotted a small stream and planned to follow it as far as he could, hopefully spotting a trail or another hiker. Otherwise, he knew he'd just have to lie down beside it and accept his fate when he couldn't go on any farther. Surprisingly, the stream idea worked. Andrew said, I ended up randomly just like crawling over a tree and finding like an acorned path. Although he wasn't aware of it at the time, the acorned path, as he described it, was actually the very same trail he'd gotten lost from nine days prior. Wow. Overjoyed and emotional at finding a trail at long last, Andrew said he collapsed alongside of it, too tired to move any further. I just slept, and I woke up, and these two, like, jacked hiker bros were like, what's going on, man? And it was like everything I wanted. It was like waking up to my own Baywatch scene, Andrew says. Oddly enough, when Andrew was found by the two hikers, he was only about two miles from the trailhead where he had started his journey. They recognized Andrew was in serious trouble, and one of them raced back to his car and sped away until he was within cell phone reception range, where he placed a call for help. It was hard to believe someone was actually there until the rescue workers were calling my name, and then I was like, is that my name? That's my name! It's me! It's Andrew. Andrew says that now a lot of it's all a blur, and he can't remember what the SAR volunteers even said to him. But he does remember feeling a sense of relief wash over him, knowing that, as he strangely worded it, a human finally had control over the situation. That's pretty cool. Cruz took Andrew out of the woods to the trailhead, and from there he was then rushed to the area hospital, where he was evaluated and later released. Two days after his amazing rescue, Andrew gave an interview to a local news crew. Although he stated that he's feeling well, he was still dealing with severe dehydration, some muscle atrophy, and says he often has periods of feeling weak and disoriented. Physically, apparently I'm fine, Andrew told the reporter. It's just the emotional thing that's the bigger thing now. I remember the man with the piercing green eyes and the woman with the accent and the man who was behind me that was carrying me with a drill sergeant voice, and then the other dude with like the perfect red-headed beard, and then the woman who's 99% a nurse but not fully registered yet. I'm just never going to forget you guys, and I have a brain that naturally forgets, so I hope that means a lot. <laughs> I'm just glad I'm here, he said. Andrew went on to tell the reporter that he still sometimes feels like this is all a dream. It just feels like I'm not fully awake, Andrew said, standing outside of his apartment in Tukwila. I don't believe myself. Like, even now, there's a person with a camera, and you. And like five days ago, I'm accepting that I'm dead, he said, shaking his head from side to side. Just two days ago, he was indeed lost in the Cascade Mountains and facing death. But now, here he is again, with a second chance at life. I stopped thinking about weeks and months and years, and it only came down to hours, Andrew says. It was like nine days of me versus me. There were so many moments when I was like, this is it, you're out, you know? And then it's like your hopes are shattered. When fully recovered, Andrew states he has a desire to become a search and rescue volunteer so he can pay it forward and come full circle. From his ordeal. Hmm. Well, there you have it. What do you make of Andrew's frightening almost? You know, I really truly do believe that that could be something supernatural. Like crossing over into another dimension or... I, I mean, I don't know for sure, but that, I... I do believe that because he, like they said, he had walked that trail dozens of times. And now he's going to get lost on it. I don't know. Seems weird to me. 
How about a joke? Just a second. It's going to take me a second to find it. Because, as usual, Gene isn't prepared. So, I got this on my phone here. And, sorry for making you wait like this. Here we go. The police came to my front door tonight, holding a picture of my wife. He said, Is this your wife, sir? Shocked, I answered, Yes. He said, Well, I'm afraid it looks like she's been hit by a bus. I said, I know, but she has a lovely personality. Thank you, everybody. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hashtag Mean Gene, all that fun stuff. And if you like this video, Tell all your friends, leave a comment down below. And if you didn't like it, then just shut up. And I will see you next time.